20 plus secret weapons, armors, rings, pendants and much more from the world of Lords of the Fallen that you may have missed. Some great items here guys you want to be getting your hands on so stay tuned for this ultimate guide. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. So everything listed and featured today will be timestamped down below with hidden paths also to unlock for efficiency. There's some real great items here today guys which you can easily miss so even if you progress past this point it's definitely worth you making a U-turn. Okay, so first things first, I'd recommend you going to the Skyrest Vestige and buying the Pilgrim's Perch key. This does unlock a couple of paths later on, which I'd recommend you using for the loot as it's great. This key will cost you 9.5k Vyga, but again, it's definitely worth it. Okay, so we'll start today's video from this Vestige of the Blind Agatha. This is a vestige point which becomes available not long after defeating the Scourge Sister Delif and you do a little scaling. This is also known as the Ballroom uh, Viga Farming Vestige, so yes. Okay, so from this point we'll firstly take the left path and we'll take back around to unlock this lift here. There's plenty of loot along the way and first up in that regard we have the Umbral Eye of Betrayed Eliard. As you come to this point guys, I've sped up the video but you just take these enemies out or just go into the umbral straight straight away, that's completely up to you. But inevitably you need to go into that umbral state so you can progress on this hidden path. Now you'll quickly come to this area where it's got quite a few enemies here and nothing too hard once you take them out guys. Activate this via that Umbral State and you'll be rewarded the Umbral Eye of Betrayed Eliard. Okay, so from this point guys, follow this quick path to this chest. This will reward you the antique hallowed sentinel armor. So yes, definitely get this. Okay, so from this chest, we're going to make our way up the stairs just behind it. And firstly, we're going to grab the Pride Bound die, so don't miss this one. Okay, so from this point, guys, we're going to jump down and get the Ardent Penitent Head Cage along with the Relic of Perpetuation. Now, this can be a little difficult because there's quite a few ads here. I mean, there's a lot going on, but if you if you stick at it, you should eventually get these. I died a couple of times. I had to come all the way back here, but I had to do what I had to do, guys. Okay, so next up guys, we're going to move on to the Book of Sin and we're going to actually come back to 
the Vestige of Blind Agatha. Again, we're going to take the same path left, but this is the route which will unlock that lift behind you. So do what you got to do, guys, and come this way. Now once you get to this point guys, you have to activate three things to unlock the door which allows you to progress back and unlock that lift. Now it can be a little sketchy around here, so do be careful and also grab this book of sin while you are here guys. Once you have the door open, follow the path I take guys, uh, there might be a few enemies on the way here, you can run past them or take them out, but you eventually get to this lift which will lead you back to the vestige we started at, and this lift comes in very handy for more loot we're going to obtain in this video.
okay so from here guys we're going to use that lift and go back down uh, what we'll do here guys is we're going to rescue an npc called jalinda i believe her name is uh, but to do this guys you need to take out all the enemies surrounding her cell once you do this one of them will drop that prison cell key you give this to her she'll eventually become a quest giver later on for you and i believe a vendor too so you want to do this definitely guys Okay, so from this point, guys, we're going to go and grab the Warrior's Claw Pendant. This, like I said at the start of the video, is locked behind a door, which requires you to have the Pilgrim's Perch key. So from the cell that we just released the prisoner from, you run to this door, guys, you use that Pilgrim's Perch key. Once you open it up, there's a few ads out here. But if you run past them, straight to that cage, the dude in, grab this item and you're good to just get out of here. Okay, so from right near this cell too, there's also the Defiance Ring you can unlock. It's, it's basically found behind a hidden door, but from the cell where we released that prisoner, if you follow this path to the back of this room, do what you gotta do within that umbral state, open this door, get this ring and you are good to go. Okay, so going back from the vestige of Blind Agatha, we're going to come to a boss fight. Now, the boss is called the Mistress of Hounds. Upon you defeating her, you'll get the Sim Piercer armor and the Sim Piercer sword, two pretty cool items. But on your way to her, guys, you'll meet an NPC, a secret NPC and vendor called Demirose Marked. So yes guys, follow the short path I take to this boss. It's actually quite an easy battle. The worst part about it is her little dogs, her beasts, her hounds. But other than that, she's quite an easy fight. So do what you gotta do.
So once you've defeated this boss guys, if you can activate the anchor between those realms, this will help you fast travel back to other vestiges. Okay, so now guys, from the vestige of Blind Agatha, we're going to go clear out the loot on the right hand side and we're going to start with the Devotion's Might. This one's quite straightforward to grab it is down in a pit with a few other enemies, but if you're quick, you can grab it, escape via the ladder, so do what you gotta do. Okay, so next up guys, we have the Brawn Ring. Okay, so again from the Vestige Point, we're heading right again. I do recommend once you grab that last item to come back and rest at this Vestige Point because the path we're going to take now guys, we run straight past all the enemies in the initial area on that right hand side. Now this can be slightly difficult at first, but once you get it down guys, you should be good. So let's try and do what I do on the screen now to run past the initial area full of enemies and you should be good. Now once you get to this spot guys, simply wait for this dude to walk around, you don't really want to jump down into the pit with him. So once he's kind of come around to you, jump down and grab this ring, then escape. So from this point guys we're just going to progress a little further on go out into the open and take a slight left now there's a few enemies here which i recommend you taking out especially the dude with the crossbow who just obliterates you so make sure you take him out once you do come back on yourself slightly and grab this hammer of holy agony Okay, so from this point guys, there's actually a boss fight just around the corner from here. So that's the path we're going to take because I know an amazing cheese to defeat him without you having to do any damage to him and he rewards you some decent loot too. So the boss is called the Sacred Resonance of Tenacity. Now just before you go here guys, make sure you activate this anchor between realms as this can be a checkpoint for this area. And there's a few bits and bobs here guys as well. So yeah, do what you got to do. Okay, so from this anchor point guys, this is where you need to go for that boss fight. Let's follow this short path and you'll come to it on your left. Now to defeat this boss and to do the cheese, it's quite easy. But firstly, you have to remove his shields. Now, if you notice, when you try to attack him, he does have a umbral state shield. So you need to go into that umbral state or use your lantern, raise that lantern up and clear his shield. What you'll notice from here, guys, is he still has another shield. That's because inside that big cage in the center of the room, there is another shield shielding him and all the other enemies. Now you need to do the same thing with this one. Now what I'd recommend here is probably try and kite all the enemies out of this room. It can be a little dangerous in here, a little sketchy in here, but do what you gotta do and remove that shield. From here guys, it's quite easy. To defeat the boss, you don't have to do anything. All you gotta do is kite him up these steps. Once you kite him up these steps, if you jump down, he follows you and he loses a massive chunk of his health. Do this five or six times and he will die on the spot rewarding you this amazing loot and what he gives you is the sacred resonance hammer and this is a great great weapon
Now what I'll also say is within this room, there is another hidden door with a secret chest. To open this door guys, you need that pilgrim's perch key yet again. So with that, you can come back here anytime if you ain't got it right now. But hey, go up into this room, open this chest and get this idea's hardiness and then you are good to go. Okay, so from this boss area, this boss arena, exit the room via the back path and grab this enhanced bloody hatchet. This thing is absolutely incredible guys. So, so powerful. You don't want to miss this. Okay, so go back into that boss area, that boss room, because we're going to go and find the next vestige point. This is called the Vestige of Dieta. Now, this you follow a quick path. There are a few enemies in the way. There are a few barrels being kicked downstairs. But if you're very careful, guys, you should be able to clear these quite easily. I mean, just run past them. You don't even got to fight them. But you will run past a few bits and bobs in regards to loot. But we're going to activate this vestige first, then come back on ourselves. So do what you got to do, guys. Okay, so right behind this vestige point, there is the Dark Crusaders Convalescence as well as the Bloody Glory. So grab these two guys, the Bloody Glory is going back on ourselves slightly. Uh, we ran past it to come and activate this vestige, but it's still simple to grab once you've got this vestige open. Okay, so from this point guys, we're actually going to progress backwards on ourselves, back to the first vestige we started a video upon, the vestige of Blind Agatha, because there's still loot in this area that we have missed. So what we want to do here guys is head back to that boss room, we're going to make our way back around this way, because there is a hidden path back to this vestige, so follow the path I take on screen now guys, and go get this thing. Okay, so from this point guys, we're going to head back towards that ladder we just come down and we're going to go and grab the shun.
Okay, so from this point, guys, we're going to run past a few enemies here. And we're going to go and access and activate another vestige. The vestige of Ferrers the Chard. We're activating this vestige because it's easier to come back from this one just in case you die. So it's basically a fail safe so you can get this loot a little easier. Okay, so from this vestige point, people, we're going to run back down and grab the blood letter. This is quite a unique weapon, one you do not want to miss. Just be careful though, because it's actually the door it's hidden behind. It's protected by a couple of dudes with those crossbows. And also when you enter this room, when you enter this door, there's a big dude in here too, which you're going to have to avoid. Just grab this item from behind him, then get out of there if you don't want to fight them. Okay, so next up guys, we're going to grab the Slinger's Ring. Now this one's also quite easy to get to, I mean you're going to have to run past enemies, don't get it twisted, but other than that it's quite straightforward. So from the lift we've just taken down from that vestige before we went to that room to grab the blood letter, take a left just before that room and go up this ladder. Eventually guys, you will come to this area right here where you have to run through. Now there are a few enemies here, again like I'm doing, just dodge past them all and quickly get up these ladders and eventually guys, you'll get to this spot where you'll find this item. Simple. Okay, so next up guys, we have the Cleric's Benediction Ring. So from the position you just grab that last ring, the Salinga's Ring, you can jump down and quickly go down the ladders. As you can see on screen now, I am at the door where you go out onto this balcony. Again, the Salinga's Ring will be up top if you climb the ladder when you come out this door. But if you go straight forward guys and climb down the ladder, you'll come to this room where the Cleric's Ring can be found. So grab this thing guys. Okay, so lastly for today's video is the Hallowed Sentinel Scripture. So to get this thing guys, follow the path I take out of the room where we just grabbed that last ring from. Now you will have to take out a few enemies here, but nothing too crazy. You'll eventually guys come to this lift which you need to take down and then beneath you you will see a platform full of enemies. 
What I'd do if I were you is I wouldn't try fighting all these uh, because there's a good chance you may die. So what I'd do is, and what I'd recommend you do is, jump down and kite all the enemies towards you. Trying to get the big guy away from that cage on the edge. Uh, this is where this item can be found guys. So I'll do as I do on screen now and go grab this item. And there we have it guys, 20, 25 plus hidden items you may have missed. Guys, if you did enjoy this video, leaving a like really helps me out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Stay tuned for many more videos on Lords of the Fallen just like this one. And hopefully guys, I'll see you on that next video.